Let's now finally start making our OmniFood website responsive. Now, before we actually write a single media query for our page, we first need to ensure that our HTML has one very important line. And that is this one here. So this meta tag here might seem quite unimportant, but actually for responsive web design, it is absolutely crucial. So if you wrote your HTML structure by hand, then you did not include, of course, this line of code here. And so you now need to pause the video and paste that there. Because again, without this uh, meta tag here, so without this line of code, responsive web design will actually not work on physical mobile devices. So not on phones and not on tablets. And the reason for that is that browsers on mobile devices will basically zoom the page out by default until it fits the screen. And so that's not what we want with media queries. We simply want to make our entire layout, so our entire design, smaller, so less wide. And so therefore we need this line of code here, which will make it so that the page will actually match the screen's width. So that's what this one here does. So the width will be equal to the device width, and the scale initially should be 100%, so one. And so what that means is that it will not zoom out of the page to fit it on the screen. Okay, but how this really works is not that important, but what matters is that you need to include this. So always include this line of code. Okay. So with that being said, let's now move on to media queries and let's delete uh, this small experiment that we did previously. And so now what I like to do is to create a new file for the media queries. So here in our CSS folder, we create yet another file. And this one I like to call queries.css. And then here in the HTML, of course, we need to include that file as well. So let's duplicate this last line and here change it to queries.css. And so now we have three CSS files and well, that's no problem at all. So let's close this down and I will actually now move these uh, other CSS files here to the left panel and then the queries on the right panel. And you will see in a minute why that is going to be really helpful. Okay, and so now we're ready to start writing our media queries, but for that we need our breakpoints. So basically the width at which we want to set the media queries. So let's use those two methodologies that we studied in the last lecture. So basically looking where our design breaks and also taking into account uh, common screen width ranges. So let's check it out here. And here we don't need all the space because all we are interested in here now is uh, changing this width. And we can even make it a lot smaller here so that we can see our page a bit better. So let's start here at uh, 1500 pixels and starting to make our page smaller. Okay. Now remember that here we have uh, a container width of 1200 pixels down here. So that's our common container, but here we actually have a 1300, so it's a bit wider. And so already at this point here, we can see that the space here on this side, between the OmniFoot and the left side, is getting bigger than the space here. And of course, that's going to become worse and worse uh, as we decrease the width. So here the design is not really breaking, but what we're going to do is to, at some point, uh, also make this hero here 1200 pixels wide, just as the rest of the page. So just as the common container element. All right. Now there is an extremely common screen size at 1366 pixel. So somewhere around here, because these are the so-called HD ready screens. And so we can choose some value between 1300 maybe and this one. All right, so let's set our first breakpoint there simply to make this hero just as wide as the rest of the page. 
So basically only that change, at least for now. Now there's one particularity about media queries that I didn't mention yet, which is the fact that we should also not use pixels in media queries. So just like we shouldn't use pixels for our layouts, we also shouldn't use them in media queries. And the reason for that is that using pixels will not adjust to the user's font size setting in the browser and also not to the user's zoom level. And so that is exactly the reason why uh, throughout this whole project, we set the font size here to this percentage and not to a fixed size of 10 pixels like we had it previously here. Remember that? So that was the whole reason why here it is 62.5 because it is 10 pixels, which is what we want, divided by the default browser font size setting. And so just like here, we should now use RAM instead of pixels. However, there is one very, very important particularity of these responsive units in media queries, which is the fact that they do not respond to this font size setting here in the HTML. Okay, so in other words, what that means is that in media queries, one rem is not 10 pixels. Instead, one rem will always be the default font size browser setting. So let me write that here actually. Rem and M, which is uh, something similar, as I will tell you in a minute, do not depend on HTML font size in media queries. Instead, we assume that one rem is equal to one m is equal to 16 pixels. Now you might be wondering what is this m a unit here instead of rem? Well, this one here, so rem is the root font size while m is basically the current font size. But that's not really important here because one rem is simply one m. But the reason why I'm even mentioning m here is because rem apparently has some bugs in some browsers when used in media queries. And therefore we should not use rem in media queries, but m. Now I'm not even sure if that's still the case, but let's uh, do it like that anyway. So it's safer like that and it works in the exact same way as the rem. So media and then max width. And here, remember, now we need to set a value in M and we didn't really choose the value yet, not even in pixels. But remember from our previous discussion here that we were looking for some value between uh, this one here and maybe 1300. So let's try maybe 1350. Okay. So to convert that to M, we simply divide that by 16 pixels. So I'm using this built-in calculator here, but you can use uh, any other. So 1350 divided by 16. So that's this strange value here, but I prefer to use like round values. And so let's go with 84. So 84 M. And that's it. Now here, let's add some comment. I will just get this code from here. And so this is below and let's calculate the pixels now again. And so that's then of course the other way around. So 84 times 16. So this media query will under normal circumstances fire at 1344 pixels. So one, three, four, four pixels. And so that's basically for smaller desktops. So smaller computers basically. Okay. So finally we have our first media query here and we also have our first breakpoint. And so now let's finally also write our very first CSS rule in this media query. And so we're gonna do what I said before which is to change the max width here to also 1200, just like we have it in the general container. So just like this one here, right? 
So let's write that here. So max width 120 rem. And of course this rem here has nothing to do with this m here. It still works exactly the same way as before, uh, before we even started with responsive web design. Okay, so I'll give it a save. And let's wait. And there it is. You saw that? There we changed our width. And now it is completely aligned here with the rest of the content. So it has now the exact same width. Now with that we created a new problem, which is that now this heading here is switched to four lines, basically. And this doesn't look so good. And so let's also uh, put down this value here a little bit. So decrease it basically one step. So that's easy as well. So that's called the heading primary. And let's actually get uh, our most important uh, styling values here. And this time I'm putting them here in the bottom. Because with that we will be able to easier see them. So let's see what the H1 is right now. So it's at 5.2. So 52 pixels here. And so let's try to step it down to the value below. So 4.4 rem. So font size 4.4 rem. And that does indeed fix it. So let's see again. And beautiful. So now if the user has like a smaller screen, let's say some laptop that has maybe this size, then everything looks nice. Well, at least here, because if we scroll down a little bit, then you see that here we actually start having some problems as well. And even more so when we start making it even smaller. So that problem actually starts quite early. So somewhere around this point, but let's not add too many media queries. So it's not a good practice to add like 10 or 15 or even 20 media queries to fix every single problem. So that's not so good. And so instead what we will do here is to simply use our media query. So the breakpoint that we already have, which is somewhere around here. And what we will do at that point is to switch this layout here from the three columns to just two. And with that, we should very easily fix this problem. All right, so that's in our style. And so now you can see why it is so helpful to have this one here open on the left and this on the right, because then you can very easily see the style on one and create a similar one on the other side. So that's right here. And here is the gallery with its three columns. So I'm just copying all of this, makes it a bit easier and just delete what I do not need. Switch it to two, and that's it. Let's go back. And there we go. So now it appears that there is way too much space here, but well, we cannot make it perfect for every single screen size, okay? So one of the more common ones might be uh, 1200 pixels exactly, and so there, it does look quite okay, I think. I mean, it's not perfect here, but uh, we don't need to worry about that because we will probably also add a media query next uh, somewhere around this width because here some more problems uh, start to appear. So now I just wanted to fix uh, these first issues that appear at the very beginning because remember how I mentioned in the last lecture or in the one before it, that what we do basically when we build a responsive design like this is to start at the top, so at the biggest width, and then make it smaller and smaller and keep adjusting whenever our design breaks. At least that's the way we do it when we're building desktop first, which is the case here. Now, if we were building mobile first, then everything would be the opposite way. So then the code outside of the media queries, 
So basically all the code that's here and here would be for the smaller screens. And then we would keep increasing the browser window and would add media queries here using min with. All right, but I'm not gonna go deep into that now because, well, that's not the way we are doing it here right now. And so I think for now, there's no need to learn that uh, very deeply. So actually that's it uh, for this uh, breakpoint here. And so let's wrap up the video here and create our next breakpoint in the next one.